Hey, what's up with you guys? It's Dan Zdaf, and today it's a GitHub and a review. And the GitHub repository I'm gonna review today is Leap P2P, the goal implementation of Leap P2P. And in my opinion, this particular library should deserve a lot of attention because it has modularized from the IPFS project. And the entire IPFS project, if you're not familiar with that, just open it, have a look at it. It's a really interesting thing. Uh, then the entire networking stack is based on this library and this is probably why it has modularized from the IPFS project itself. Uh, the installation process is quite straightforward. You just follow these four steps and it should be working for you. The only thing I would recommend is if you're on Mac before doing this, actually when you're doing this, you just type sudo and then do that so you avoid any kind of problems. And if you're on Windows, you just run your uh, come online with the administration pri administrator privileges should be fine. Uh, this library has different implementations in uh, four different languages in JavaScript, Go, and Rust. And why I say four is because there is a fourth implementation in C Sharp that is supported by the community. But today I will actually uh, just go through the uh, Go implementation of the lib P2P. Uh, as I've already installed the library on my computer just by following these four steps, I did nothing more than that. I will show you the example and I'll tell you what's uh, in this example and how it works. So in examples repo, there is a chat example. You should probably install this example uh, repository separately because it's not in the main folder so after I, I, I followed these four steps I didn't have examples so you need to download it separately just put it in the examples folder, folder or whatever you want to put it and then run the examples uh, so when you install in this what's happening when you do this command it pulls the main libp 2 p go libp 2 p library to your computer then this command selects the folder where you just downloaded it to uh, at the go path though and then you call make make is using this make file and what's happening on that it pulls some other uh, some other libraries some other repositories for this GX packaging tool that IPFS uses so just pulling out some other dependencies that actually will result in some weird import names when you look at the code later on when you when, when I'll show you when we're gonna look at the examples so yeah examples should be installed separately and uh, after, only after that you can use it now let's jump into the code I'll open that source directory where all the examples are meant to be but they were not there so we had to install them separately and uh, it's around here. Here it is. And at this time, we're gonna look at the chat example. I'm gonna open the terminal, add the folder. And so, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna first build our binary so we can use the program. And I'm gonna go with go build chat. Okay, so we now have our binary. And now I'm gonna run the program. I'm gonna specify the port 3001, it can be any port you want, but in this case I'm gonna specify 3001. And as we can see, we now have our multi-address that is uh, publicly available, so we can access it from other nodes. And as we can see, we have this hash that is generated from the private uh, key pair that is uh, generated every time we run the program. So if we stop the program and run it again we're gonna have a different key because it's generating a new CRA key every time so now we're just gonna copy that as the terminal suggests and we're gonna open the new terminal window and then just paste this command and as we can see now we're connected and the peer-to-peer -peer chat is happening hello 
we got the message and now we go and type hi so we see that it is working and this is a sim very simplistic peer-to-peer uh, -peer chat we can see here and now we're gonna try something else and I'll show you a bit of an abnormal behavior I'll create a third window and I will connect to the same chat see we got a new stream we got a new stream and this guy is now connected to this this node and this node is connected to this node as well but these two nodes they're not connected to each other so if I type something here only this guy gonna get it and if I type something here again only this guy gonna get it but if I gonna type something here something interesting is gonna happen only one person will receive it at a time and it's gonna happen sequentially so this guy and this guy and this guy this is happening because now this guy this node has four streams running at a time two reading streams and two writing streams so it's writing and reading from this node and writing and reading to this node and it cannot it just can't uh, read from this terminal input uh, tw uh, two times at a time it just can read two can get two inputs because it's both inputs both reading streams are reading from this uh, terminal input window uh, so it first one stream is taking control of this then the other stream is taking control of this input so it just kind of works like a round robin so one after the other and they're just sending it just changing streams back to back and it's gonna do it do it all the time so this guy then this guy and this this is how it's gonna work all right so now we're just gonna jump into the code you gonna terminate this processes and open the window oops we don't have it I'm gonna open it again quickly uh, p2p go p 2 b examples chat chat go this is what we're looking at all right so looking at the main function what we can see here here's a four flags that you can specify when you're running the program source port destination which is the multi-address multi-address I already explained you what it is it's, it's, it's a long string containing your hash the port you're connecting to your IP and uh, then there's two other flags that helps in the back of the parsing the flags we're creating new new seed we can generate a new key pair using RSA with a length of 2048 then this private key will you will be used as our uh, uh, to generate our peer ID when we create a, a host with the lib P2P. Uh, after we created our instance of a host, we now go to this part. And this part is determines whether it's a first connect, uh, very first uh, instance that we've made. So then when we just specify the port uh, and I don't specify the destination address, it will just await for uh, incoming connections and uh, unless there is a connection made to this host there will be no uh, stream no stream created but this guy when it specified the destination host, host as soon as it reaches it creates a stream writing and reading stream uh, automatically so in this case it will be only be, going to be one reading and writing stream when in this case, when I'm waiting for incoming connections, I can come uh, connect multiple nodes to this guy. So uh, potentially, as I showed you previously, we can have more than two streams running at the same time. So the stream handler handle stream is basically exact same thing as we can see here. It just creates a buffer and then creates two routines with the write data and read data. So if you just go here, you see handle stream is exact same thing. It just creates the buffer and then creates two subroutines. And this subroutine is uh, is reading from this uh, buffer uh, from this buffer and writing data is reading uh, the string from the input uh, from the S uh, standard input, which is our terminal. And this is why I couldn't send. Uh, data to two peers at a time because we're only reading uh, string one string for one uh, 
uh, stream at a time. And this is why they're taking the control of this in a standard input back to back and we only can send a message to one period at a time. Uh, th that can be easily modified and you can make it so uh, it will send data to uh, multiple hosts at a time. So we're just reading it from the standard input, then we checking the error, of course, it's go, and then we uh, writing the string and the flush. And after we flush, the data is being sent. In the receiving, uh, when we're receiving the data, is the exact same thing. We're just reading uh, the string from the buffer, checking the end of the line means that that's our string, and then we just print it. Uh, What's also interesting is how we add our address to a peer store. We use this add uh, at peer store when we are connecting to a destination host, because when we are connecting to this destination host, we have this long multi address that we need to extract this, the port from the IP from the hash from. So we pass into the, uh, our peer store, and it actually kind of decodes it, takes out the protocol, takes out the IP, all, all this necessarily, the data that is necessarily for the process of connecting to the host and then it adds this information, so peer ID, target address, peer to the permanent uh, TD, all this required information to the peer store and only after that we can actually interact with the remote host. And as I said previously, we can see this weird looking import names that are being imported after we make our dependencies uh, in, in the installation instruction. Otherwise, we don't make this installation uh, dependency, we don't make them. This GX packet manager, manager will not pull anything and we will not have these guys here. And that was a basic introduction into Leap P2P and Go, this beautiful networking stack that has uh, several implementations, different languages. Uh, oops. Uh, it has a lot of documentation to it. It has implementation, different languages, JavaScript, Go, Rust, C Sharp. This is supported by the community because community understands the importance of this library. Uh, the documentation is great, the maintenance is great, it has a lot of modules, a lot to cover, uh, has all the installation instructions, even has examples repository, it's a separate repository that you need to install separately. And the only thing I found that is not working, this chat with Rendezvous, it's not working when you try to build it, just produce a bunch of errors, doesn't really work, but the rest seem to work pretty well uh, and this repo it easily earns 9 out of 10 and what I also want to mention that not many repositories have its customized logo for their project this is just absolutely amazing in my opinion and this logo looks pretty good so it easily earns 9 out of 10 and I absolutely would recommend you to look into this site uh, of the fans and I would totally recommend looking into this peer-to-peer -peer networking stack. Leap Peer-to-Peer -peer is one of the best solutions that are available out there for peer-to-peer -peer networking for right now. And that's it for today. That was Dan's Dev. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye.